Since League of Legends launched in October of 2009, the player base has been upset. Even in the very early days, there were talks about certain champions being designed poorly, either because they were too weak, too strong, or too frustrating to play against. The discussion would rage for years, almost a decade to be exact. That is, until one fateful day in 2019. On this day, the debate would be finished, and the most hated champion ever would be crowned. For the first time in League of Legends history, the player base would agree on something. This cat was a mistake. I think I'd remove Yumi. Yumi? Yumi needs to be gone. That's a solid one, I was thinking about this one. I think I would just remove Yumi, yeah. This champion is just so annoying, and it, I don't think it should be allowed that you have to press this little button in the game and still win. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Yumi. I'm so glad they made Yumi as a champion. It really just adds a lot to the game. Is Yumi not removed? I don't know. Like, bro. I hate playing with Yumi. I hate playing against it. Get that chap out of here. Teemo, Yasuo, and Shaco are all would-be contenders for League's most hated champion. If Yumi did not exist. Yumi, the champion who was literally built for new players to be able to play, is easily the most hated champion in League of Legends, and it isn't close. Just out of curiosity, I recently ran a poll on my channel that received over 1,000 votes, and over 50% of people voted for Yumi as the most hated champion. What went so wrong with Yumi's design that she managed to become a symbol of what most people don't like about League? How did this cat become so absurdly overpowered that she had almost a 100% pick or ban rate at Worlds? Not only that, at that same event, she had a 100% win rate. This video is going to cover the tragedy of Yumi. Yumi's announcement trailer was met with high praise overall. When you're making a cat as a champion, people are probably going to like it. Mm. So cute! Oh, I just put a smile on my face. Yumi, I'm not reading this. She's the most annoying champion in the game. I'm not reading this. Yumi's kit was very unique. She was the first champion designed to be completely untargetable most of the time. What could possibly go wrong? Riot's intent with Yumi was to create a champion that anyone could play, and especially a champion for players who were brand new to League. This does make sense. Most of League's player base has been playing for quite a long time, and the basics of the game, like moving your character, is completely automatic for most people. To actually learn to do those things, though, can be very difficult. Anyone who has introduced someone to League, especially someone who hasn't played RTS games like StarCraft or WarCraft, has witnessed firsthand what it looks like to watch someone try to learn the controls. It is not pretty. Yumi would give new players a way to learn what the game is like without having to learn it all at once. Without having to worry about positioning your champion, for example, you're able to start to pay attention to things like the minimap, what is happening in fights, and other concepts without getting overwhelmed. This sounds great in theory. The problem is that it can be incredibly frustrating to play against. Not being able to target a champion simply leads to situations that feel unfair and blatantly unfun. So Yumi was released, and you might expect based on what I've said that she was broken. But she actually had a 29% win rate when she was released. She was performing so poorly that Riot Hotfix buffed her entire kit. A stats, passive, QE, and alt. At the time, many people considered her to be the worst champion ever released, largely because all of her numbers and base stats were just so low. Her win rate would steadily increase, peaking at 47.5% in July and dropping down to about 43% before Worlds. Yumi had a 35% presence at Worlds. When she was picked, it was almost always as a duo with Garen. These two together created a very skillful, interactive, and engaging combo. It sure was fun to watch. Going in though, this is way too aggressive. Now has to flash out to safety. If they can be able to turn this final chapter comes in, he's still alive for now. No one's saying gonna grab that kill. The rest of the team is still can turn. Yeah, not even gonna be contested by Tally Force. They can't because they're getting they're getting pushed back. <laughs> I'll tie this duo. <laughs> oh my god, I've seen this in three. Run away! Reckless is unstoppable. This is the raw decision-making power of Hillisang. You should make note of this, because Yumi and Worlds would become a very controversial topic. Throughout 2020, Yumi would continue to receive a wide array of changes, her win rate eventually settling around 50%. Even at this point in time, barely one year after release, she was so disliked by the community that Riot had to address it. They released a dev blog post addressing questions from the community, specifically why she even existed and why she was, quote, 
brain dead. Riot said that Yumi's win rate increased with games played in a similar way to other champions, meaning that they felt she was not as brain dead as she seemed. They compared her mastery curve, as seen here, to Akali and Kiana. They elaborated that Yumi specifically would teach people things that did not apply to other champions. For example, how to make your lunch and play League at the same time. Okay, I made that one up, but one example they gave was learning when to detach from an ally in a team fight to use her passive, or deciding who to attach to for better positioning. The relevance of these examples is up for debate. It is easy to argue that Yumi simply does not have to care about positioning at all compared to a champion like Soraka. Soraka can actually be targeted in a team fight, but as long as Yumi is on a carry, there's nothing you can do about it. It doesn't take incredible game knowledge to simply attach to your strongest carry and press E on cooldown. When addressing why Yumi should even exist, they said that Yumi filled a unique role in the champion roster. Funny enough, years before Yumi's release, Meteos infamously said this. Guys, what if you made a champion that can't get gold, can't auto attack, can't move? but they're balanced, 50% win rate. Almost as though clairvoyant, his prediction came true in the form of Yumi. Riot gave some data showing champion popularity and Yumi was clearly popular. Riot pointed out that even when Yumi's win rate was very low, her play rate was still high. They felt that Yumi provided a way to coordinate with a team that was unique and focused on elements of the game that some people seem to really enjoy. They acknowledged that she was frustrating and unfair to play against and also perceived as the game's easy mode. The final question of the post. Do we think Yumi is balanced? No, we don't think Yumi has been in a state that's balanced or that she's been in a good place in regards to game health. Keep those words in mind as we fast forward to the World Championship of 2021, specifically Day 1, Match 1, Damwon Gaming Kia versus Fun Plus Phoenix. The first champion pick of the first game of Worlds, Yumi. No, no one first picks Yumi. There's no- Are you sure? Oh, okay. <laughs> that's the first pick! Yeah! Connor's Jace. Yeah. This guy loves to play oh. winning lanes. Oh. oh no, it's a Yumi again. Ah, it's a disaster. <laughs> that thing scares me. Can we get a remake? A long, slow debate. There it is. There's the Yumi. They think that perhaps Rogue would go for a first pick Yumi here for Trin. Uh, for I Trin think B. it's meta now, dude. I think you just got to accept so. it. Yumi dominated worlds. She was picked or banned in 96% of games. Oh, and that first game she was locked in, she dealt more damage than three of the enemy players. And this same pattern would repeat over and over again. Not only that, she would often beat the solo laners on her own team in overall damage. In this game, for example, Jin may as well have attached to Yumi. You see, Yumi was a champion who was destined to be broken. Her obvious weakness is that she is not strong early and wants to scale into the game. You can simply draft champions who have an easy time playing safe, like Jin or Ezreal, and simply farm from a distance. At the time, Yumi's best friend wasn't released yet, and even without her, Yumi thrived. Core JJ said, I think Yumi is OP. When Yumi makes decent plays, the opponent has to make great plays. Even if you did draft to win early, which HLE did successfully versus PSG, it simply didn't matter. Yumi would make it to mid game, come online, and eventually be too strong to deal with in the late game. That is exactly what happened. You simply can't outplay a champion that you can't even interact with. That's why the counterplay to Yumi was to ban her. Appearing in 80 out of 83 games played at Worlds, this catastrophe would not be forgotten by the community. A few months later, Riot would give Yumi some heavy nerfs, and her win rate would remain turbulent for a long time. Every few patches, Yumi would get changed in some way, and eventually need buffs or nerfs shortly after. To make matters worse, in January 2022, Riot dropped one of the most balanced champions to ever be released. Ziri, whose patch history on LOL Wiki is longer than most full novels, would quickly become Yumi's best friend. Both of these champions are very frustrating to play against on their own. When combined, they create one of the most overpowered duos of all time. These two would dominate pro play, to the point where Riot would have to address it multiple different times. The problem was that these champions complemented each other perfectly. If either of them were even remotely balanced on their own, they would be absurdly overpowered together. Unless these champions are extremely weak individually, they could never be balanced. Riot made a post specifically talking about the Zeri and Yumi issue. The post basically said, we don't know what to do. Good luck. Eventually, Ziri's designer would even apologize for creating Ziri, calling her a failed champion. Unfortunately, we do not like seeing her in pro play. 
and so we deliberately are keeping her very weak so that she does not show up in pro play. That's my bad. I screwed up on that character. If I had been a better designer, maybe um, Zeri would be more playable. <sighs> but sometimes we take a risk and it doesn't pan out. Does Zeri make me depressed? Yes, she is my biggest failing as a champion. Luckily, Riot did eventually ship some very heavy nerfs to Zeri, specifically to push Zeri out of the meta. Her win rate dropped below 40% in solo queue before she finally stopped being picked in pro play. Zeri would not be picked or banned a single game in Worlds of 2022. But this video is not about Zeri, it's about Yumi. No! Worlds 2022, day one, game one. The Yumi's going to follow as we probably will be accustomed to Yumi staying on the ban list, uh, much to the adoration of the fans. You can hear cheering already for that one. Fiora banned, Yumi's available. Is T1 just gonna slam it? Oh boy. So Fnatic must have a good answer to this. You don't just give Yumi over. No. Right. Severe Yumi, isn't it? You have to feel her. Last time having the point and click sun for the Nila. Just listen to the crowd. Loud, loudest chant we've had today. Ban you. <laughs> I think yes. Yeah. I, I, I still feel like even though the bot lane went out as it did, like it's still the pick you're going for. It cannot be denied that towards the late game. Another Yumi World Championship. This time, Yumi would be picked or banned in 95% of games. You might think, well, at least she didn't have a 100% presence. That may be true, but her win rate did. She was picked in eight games and won eight games. The only champion who had a higher presence than Yumi for Worlds of 2022 was Aatrox, who at least had the decency to have an acceptable win-loss ratio. To put into perspective how broken Yumi was, while she was annihilating this professional tournament, she was sitting at close to a 45% win rate in solo queue. This version of Yumi had been intentionally over-nerfed shortly before the tournament to avoid a repeat of the last last year's worlds. Riot had nerfed her very hard, so much so that one day later, they introduced a hotfix buff to her Q. They even said in the patch notes, we recognize there's a risk to the return of Artillery Yumi, but there aren't a lot of great areas to buff. Even when Riot thought they had made her unplayable, she was still way too strong, even without Ziri in the picture. And their comment about Artillery Yumi could not have been more accurate. During T1 versus Fnatic on day five, Kyria picked Yumi, Faker picked Silas. Yumi dealt more damage than Silas. Yumi almost dealt the same damage as the AD carry, and more damage than anyone on the enemy team. Not only that, Yumi was the most gold efficient damage dealer in the game. It's not just that she could do more damage than Silas, she could do it with much less gold. In EDG versus Fnatic, Mako regularly outdamaged characters on both teams, including Victor, a champion known for high AoE damage. It's pretty ridiculous that an enchanter support could outdamage some of the best mid laners in the world, who are required to farm all game to buy their damage dealing items. Who would you be more afraid of, this guy or this cat? The answer should be obvious. The community was not happy, and rightfully so. Yumi had been completely meta-defining for two worlds in a row, and she wasn't even an interesting champion to watch. It isn't entertaining to watch some of the most skilled and best players in the world play a champion that you can't even interact with. Keep in mind, her solo queue win rate was so low at this point that they thought she could not possibly be a problem. Riot had no choice, they had to do something. A couple of months later, Yumi would receive a gameplay update, fixing Yumi forever. Just kidding, of course it didn't. Riot had made some interesting choices with this update. Previously, Yumi's passive had worked in a way where you had to detach from her ally in order to attack the enemy and create a shield. The new Yumi passive allowed her to activate her passive while she is still attached to an ally. She could just land any ability instead of having to auto attack. What Riot did, effectively, was remove the very small bit of counterplay that Yumi actually had. Previously, it was possible to stun Yumi when she detached to activate her passive. Now that was no longer possible, so you simply couldn't interact with Yumi whatsoever. The biggest complaint with Yumi up until this point was that not being able to target her was unfair and frustrating. With this update, they made it so that you could literally not interact with her at all. This change further cemented the things that people hated about Yumi. She was already critical criticized for being basically a permanent buff that you could play as. Now that's what she literally was. Previously, Yumi's kit did have some skill expression. You could hop off of your ally to land your passive, you could block some damage and then reattach. 
There was no incentive to do this anymore. Her skill floor was now even lower, and so was her skill ceiling. One of the pain points of Yumi's design was that the best thing for Yumi to do was to attach to the strongest champion and stay there. This meant that Yumi would often abandon a weak AD carry and attach to a bruiser instead. To try to stop this, Riot added a system where Yumi would need to stay attached to one person to get more value out of her abilities. So now, if your bot lane lost lane, you had two champions doing nothing instead of one. The rework was not well received, by the community and also by many Yumi players. The most fundamental part of playing any multiplayer game is interacting with other players. Yumi simply does not allow this. When Riot designed this champion, their goal was to make it easy to introduce new players to a difficult genre. By designing Yumi in this way though, they made it so that the Yumi player barely even got to do anything. The rework just made this problem even worse. Yumi still exists in this state to this day, with minor changes, buffs, and nerfs. And she is still hands down the most hated champion in the game. This is a graph from over two years ago showing what people voted as the most hated champion, and it speaks for itself. This is a thread from three months ago asking players what champion they felt did not belong in the game. Nothing has changed, and the Yumi update just made people dislike Yumi even more. It is definitely true that MOBA games in general are very intimidating and overwhelming for new players. It isn't surprising that Riot tried to bridge the gap. It's tragic that the champion that was supposed to help new players get into the game ended up being the most hated and annoying champion that Riot has ever created. And that is really saying something. I'm curious, what do you think Riot should do about Yumi? Is her design fixable, or is it so fundamentally flawed that she should just be removed from the game? Before finishing up, I wanted to take a moment to thank you all for supporting the channel. The algorithm works in mysterious ways, and every like or comment really does go a long way. Let me know what you think down below, and again, thank you for watching.